what it is, what it is, what it is. It's your boy LB. Talk Sunday. You know we had to do a live for Sunday. Sunday. You gotta talk on Sunday. And of course we got some very bad news. We got some very bad news for this um Sunday. Yes indeed. We have lost one of the greatest boxers to ever lace up. Rest in peace. Sleep in peace. Mr. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. One of the greatest middleweights to ever live. Um, I think uh, Bernard Hopkins broke his title defenses. I think before Bernard um, uh, 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 he had the most title defenses. Um, a couple of great middleweights. You know, you got Carlos Monzon, uh, 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 Marvin Marvelous Hagler, Bernard Hopkins. Three of my favorites, just to name three from back in the day. But, um, yeah, rest in peace, Mr. Marvin Marvelous Hagler. From my understanding, it has something to do with some COVID complications, which is, which is terrible. COVID has uh, took a lot of good people from us. And if COVID... Is responsible for Marvin Marvis Hagler. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, fuck you, COVID. That's all. Fuck COVID. But getting back on to why we hear perception. That's you know, that's something to go along with what we what we got going with Mr. Marvin Marvelous Hagler. Perception. Your perception of Sipping some coffee. That's right. It's hot outside, and I'm still drinking coffee. Cause I'm that type of animal. I'm a beast with it, y'all. I drink coffee even when it's hot. I don't care if it's 100 degrees outside. I'm getting me a cup of coffee. That's how I turn my brain on. I'm a different. I'm a different animal. I hit different. I'm a different species. Like, press the like button as you walk in. Share the video. Get it out there. Let them know. I heard Burley talking again. It's Sunday talk. It's Sunday talk. It's church talk. You know, Sunday church. So we got to talk church. And what we're talking about today is perception. The perception of. You know, because I had somebody say something about um, people making videos about me. And some of the things they say. And they like, is he trying to diss you? And I was like, he could be trying, but he's not. Because if someone is disrespecting you, if you're taking it as a disrespect, what you're saying is that person matters to you. That's all. So if your enemy is dissing you or so-called dissing you and you're taking it some sort of way, that means your enemy matters to you. Now, um, you can't diss me because you don't matter to me. And that's, and that's just putting it nicely. Um, <laughs> people that matter to me, uh, um, you got to keep those people few. You got to keep the people that matter to you, you got to keep to a small number. Now, if you're lucky, maybe you'll have it to a large number. <laughs> Zakaya Jackson, that's right. Zakaya, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, yeah, you know. You can only be dissed if you perceived it as a diss. <laughs> even, uh, 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 even physical attacks, your perception could change it from what it really is. See, a lot of people can't spar. Why? Because in a fight, they perceive themselves as fighting for their life. So they can never spar. I know a lot of people like that. Like, nah, son, I want to learn how to fight, but you can't punch me in my face. See, he can't perceive, his perception is that he wants to fight without getting punched in his face. And your perception doesn't always line up with our, what we call our reality. Because we're not even sure if our reality is our reality. But that's a deep conversation and we're not going to get that far. We're just going to say our reality. Your perception may not match up to our reality. So you're off. And that's how 
off perception is. Let me tell you how big perception is. They say that when the Indians seen the white men coming on the water with their boats, they didn't see nothing. Because since they had ne never seen a boat or a white man, their perception was nothing. They seen nothing, even though there were boats coming towards them. See, that's perception. Perception can be selective depending on what's happening to you. So that's why you can say, uh, that person is dissing me. This person is dissing me. And somebody that's really dissing you, you may not even perceive as a threat, uh, as a diss. So it's your perception. So if you cut down your what you believe to be perceiving as the said thing, they can't use that against you. So even if you're in a fight and you lost, and they, you know, if you perceive that as a loss, that's what it will be. It will be a loss. He kicked your ass. Okay. Um, but that's your perception. Because from that one ass whipping, it could open up your life. Look at Canelo. Look at Canelo. Canelo out there, the money man in boxing. It took for Mayweather to beat him up to make him the money man. Now, I'm pretty sure when he lost to Mayweather that night, he perceived it as a loss. Like, shit, my career could be over because this black man over here named Mayweather put the beast on me. But now look at Canelo. He's on top of the boxing game. He is pound for pound the greatest, the, one of the best fighters in the game. And he's the cash cow up there with Pacquiao. You get you a fight with Canelo, you getting that money. But imagine if he would have perceived himself as a loser or not worth boxing anymore after Mayweather won. Imagine if he would have perceived that. Will we have Canelo today? I think not. So, your perception of what people are saying to you only matters if they mean something to you. So if you don't want something to hurt you, cut off the meaning. You mean nothing to me. If you mean nothing to me, how could you ever diss me? How could you ever put me down? How could your opinion ever matter? Because that's all it is. Like, this whole internet thing is built off of people's opinion. That's how petty, petty we are as, 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 as um, the God sentient beings that we are. That's how petty we are that we are worried about how many times a picture got a like or if it got a dislike or what this said. Like how, how, like when you think about the basis of that, how could that really alter your life in any way? So what you're doing is you're making a whole bunch of people that you don't even know matter to your life. That's that saying, what you eat don't make me shit. So how could anybody's opinion <laughs> really matter to you? Like why? It, it, unless it should. Unless it should. Like if your opinion was the um was the uh, uh, initiation of me getting the bag that's something different like if your opinion is going to alter how I get the bag that's something different you know but these are these would be people that matter to you because if they are in control of your bag that you're trying to get then that means they matter to you so it's like your boss you know, you could be getting paid $200,000 a year. You walk into your boss's office and his breath smells like hot doo-doo. Hot doo-doo. Do you go out and say, listen here, man. Excuse me, boss. But your breath smells like shit. No, you don't because you want to keep your job, right? <laughs> so, you don't say that to him because you're trying to hold on to the bag. See, because he matters to you. See, that's when... You can even, even then, when people matter to you, doesn't mean that their perception of you has to matter to you. But it makes sense that your mother, uh, your wife, your husband, whoever you with that you love, that their opinion would matter to you. That makes sense because there's love involved. But even then, Antoine Owen, salute, even then, you still got to be strong enough to hear a person's opinion, but don't let it, it doesn't have to hit you in the heart. My daughter, who I love dearly, could uh, give me an opinion, and I'm going to hear her out because she matters to me. 
But just because she matters to me doesn't mean I'm going to take her advice or I'm going to go the route of where her opinion is, is trying to send me. See, this is, see, your perception goes into your confidence. If you're confident about yourself, you perceive things as you do, not as what they tell you. Because you're confident in yourself. That's why nowadays people don't do no homework. You know, a lie is, you know, you, you, it's hard to tell truth from lies because they say um, a, a lie then traveled around the block before the truth could put his pants on. Well, it's different now. The lie, a lie can travel around the world before the truth even gets out of bed. Like the truth is still sleeping. He's not even knowing what the hell is going on. That's how fast lies travel now. And it's because of perception. Everybody is Yes, Eric Foss, and as soon as your, their opinion matters to you, you weaken yourself. But the crazy thing is people that say that and still let people's opinion matter to them. What it is, Pimpin', the exile risen is up in What it be, Pimpin'? That's right. You have to matter to yourself, and it's hard. You don't know how hard that is. You don't know how hard that is. A lot of people don't really understand how hard it is to respect yourself. And respect your own opinion. You can say it. But you look for other people's opinion. How other people are going to think about you. Yo check this out. What you think it is. Yo listen to this rhyme. What you think it is. Instead of saying nah I like this rhyme. This rhyme is fire. It's kind of like the Matrix. When Neil went to the Matrix. And he was like I don't know if I'm the one. And she was like yeah you're not the one. See you got to know. You got to know. You got to stand with your convictions. Even if they even if they lead you to a so-called loss, air quotes, loss. Because over here in this room, we don't believe in winning and losing over here. We only believe in what is. Because winning and losing can change the perception of something. You know? You can win and be like, oh shit, I just won all of this money, man. Like I hit the lottery. You know, I'm 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 straight, I'm set. Then the next day, they kidnap your daughter and say, we want all of the money or we're going to kill your daughter. What you going to do? You going to give that money up? That's right. Right cross that button. <laughs> right cross that like button. You going to get that money up? So, your perception is not always going to be right. But you got to stand on it. That's why you got to stand on your convictions and they'll lead to your perceptions. People can tell, can call me a hero unless I still put the work in, I think. He said, people can call me a hero and unless I still put the work in, I think I'm garbage. That's right. Your perception, like Tiger Woods, we tore Tiger Woods down. They tore, well, I ain't going to say we, they tore Tiger Woods down because the perception was he was this black guy playing golf. He was clean he was wholesome then they come to find out he's taking waitresses in the back he beating them up in the back of dumpsters worth a billion dollars and they and they trashed him off of their perception tiger woods never said he didn't like having sex with broke waitresses in the back of diners he never said that we just all perceived that because he played golf so well <laughs> and he was so cool line of b that was our mistake. And we killed him off of our mistake or their mistake. They killed him. They killed him. Murdered his career. Even though he came back, he bounced back. But he was never the original Tiger again. See, perception can kill you if you allow it to run them up. I would never let the perception go that I can't take a punch in the face because I'm the man of defense. He said, I didn't judge that man once. Salute. Because I'm the man of defense, you know. I don't want the perception put out there that I can't never be hit. Because guess what that's going to do? It's going to bring out the hitters. Not the hitters. Hit I'm talking about the hitter hitters. The hitters that hit different. Because they're going to want some of that action. I would. Hold on, hold on. What you saying? You can't be hit ever? I want some of that action. So, I don't want that perception out there. 
So I let people know, yeah, I am the man of defense, but I still get hit. It's not 100%. There's no absolute here. We're not absolutely defending anything. We're just lowering the odds, lower the odds, lower the odds. No absolute. But there are people that put perceptions of absolute out there. And then that's why they can't perform. That's why they got a lie, duck, high, and job, and they can't jump in the ring and perform like Mr. Burley because they got that perception of lies they, lies they got to live up to that they know will be exposed. So they just stay away from that arena. And I get it. That's safe. Smart, you know. If you're going to be a charlatan, unless, if you're going to be a charlatan, at least be a smart charlatan. Don't be a foolish charlatan. So the perception that you allow of yourself, this is not your reputation. See, reputation and perception is different. It can be different. See, your reputation is something different. But your reputation is also how people perceive you. They're going to perceive you through your reputation. So if you got a reputation of being a stand-up dude, people are going to perceive that you do stand-up things. What, I, what you think about the four draw? What was that? The four draw? Put me up on it. What am I missing? Igor. Igor, words of wisdom. Salute. Thank you. See, once you start taking out the perception, you can take the sting away from anything. Like, yo, he just dished you, son. No, he didn't. You can't. Slander is powerful. It can ruin a reputation. Yes. Slander is very powerful. And you have to, you have to fight against slander. Yeah. You have to fight against slander, and um, and and it's hard sometimes because you can be slandered from all different directions. So, you know, uh, it it may it'll start perceiving like everybody's attacking you. But like I said once again, if these people don't matter to you, even slander doesn't matter. It, all controversy is good controversy. There's no such thing as bad controversy. Mean it. Because we're petty. We're petty. We're petty humans. And um, it's like the same reason why you drive past a car crash and you can't stop looking at it. Because we're petty humans. <laughs> we're very petty. So these are certain things you can't, you know, you got to factor in. And you can't take it so deep. It's when you take it deeply is that you're really beating up on yourself. Raymond Ford. No, I... It was the fight. Was it the fight? No, I'm not too sure, Raymond Ford. Was that, I don't know if that was the guy that ran off. Because I just seen the fight where a guy just ran off, ran across the cage and kicked him in the face. It was amazing. Yes, it's the way we see things in our mind. And that's how powerful our mind is that you can... That's why you you hear everybody talking about, yeah, they hating on me, son. Because in our mind, we want to really believe that there's this group of people that are trying to stop your progress when it's you. There is no group of people. You created the group of people. It's you. You're stopping their own progress. Now, every now and then, don't get it twisted, there are people that will try to stop your progress, like, if, you know, when I was going to do my seminars, they was calling out ahead of, to the people saying, why would you have Light Burley there? He's a fraud. You shouldn't have him in your dojo. So they were trying to slander me. But I still went. So I crushed their slander. Because when I pulled up on these people and showed them real martial art uh, excellence, they was like, well, there's some guys that called and said you was a fraud, but you come here and you show out. So guess who they point the fingers at? The fake people who called. Because I came, I showed up and showed out. So, you know, slander can be what it is. But if you are who you are, I was about to left or about to right hook that beat. If you are who you are, you walk right through it. Because you know who you are. It's only when you're in question with who you are that people can tell you things about yourself. You got to know about it. Like everything you know about yourself today 95% of it is what people told you. And that's crazy, right? Like, everything you think about yourself today, unless you're a super mother, super person who had the right people working with you, everything you think about yourself comes from the critiques of other people. That's how terrible we are at this. Like, we are, like, 
you know, it's understandable to want the admiration of your peers. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But to judge yourself off of how other people feel you is it's asinine. That means they that, that means they're controlling you. That means they, they they have they have your life in the palm of their hands. And see how asinine that is? But yet we allow it to happen. We allow people to dictate how they feel about us to us. <laughs> to us. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 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 a you know, you look at it. I have people telling me I don't know fifty two. <laughs> He's telling me. But that's why you know like that's why you see like Burley always laughing at him. Ah, uh, that's right. He says easy to put people down. Take me to dinner instead. There you go. You can choose your group of pairs, yes. You have a you have about what God say about you. Yeah. Larry Moore. Yeah, that's where the mouth is for. That's where the mouth is for, Jack, uh, Sakaya Jackson. That's right. That's what our mouths are for, to open up and say some shit and, and to eat. But more times we're talking shit than eating. More people talk shit than they, they should be eating and probably be talking less shit. But if you know what the mouth is for, then you shouldn't be distracted by it. But we are. And this is why we, these are the things that training and, 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 and the warrior's path can help you with. Is learning how to only matter to yourself. Like your words should matter to yourself. If you say you great, you great. If you say you late, you late. If you say you weak, you weak. No one should say, you know, I get this kind of, I get this feeling like you're like a weak type of person. Like you should stop people dead in their tracks. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't know me? Take no, 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 no. I'm gonna have to strike that from the records. Cancel. You don't know me to make such a call. Like I'll take certain things, like you can say. This is a yellow patch with a gray shirt because you're looking at it. You, you can know that. But what's in here, you can't know. So you got to stop people dead in their tracks when they start trying to push their ideologies on you and how you feel. Hell no. Stop dead it. I don't care who it is. Your husband, your wife, your mama, your father, your kids, anybody, your, your God, your savior. Stop them in their tracks. You don't know me like that. You don't know me, homie. That's right, Alliance Martial Arts. This is why you should keep gold secret because even well-meaning people, family and friends, can cause you to doubt yourself. Yes, and, they, and, and it might not even be intentional. Most of the time it's not. Far as blessed. Hey, what's going on? Nah, you can start off with 52. 52 is a defensive art. It's probably best to start off learning how not to be hit and then learn how to hit people. You know, I think that would be best. But yeah, sometimes attention, unintentionally people can cause you to doubt yourself only because they're not doing what you're doing. If you wake up and go to your home like, yo, I think I'm, um, I'm going to fight five people today. Now he's not a fighter. He's gonna say, why the why are you doing that? Five people? Aren't you gonna get hurt? How could you win against five people? What if what if what if while you're fighting the four, the fifth breaks your neck or hits you in the head with a stick or something? See, they already they they've already started sowing the seeds of doubt in your head. So, Alliance is right. Mr. Peter Couts is in here. He's talking facts. Am I teaching Bagua from beginning to advance? Indeed. That's right. You can start whatever you want. You're the one in charge. So the, indeed. See, that's what this is about. This is what I'm trying to get my peoples that follow me, to rock with me, to understand. It's like you are the one that matters. You. That's right. It's a cool selfishness. It's the selfishness you need. That's right, Igor. He said, I could have been a goddamn astronaut. Misty Knight Productions, salute, salute. 
Yeah, you are the one in charge. Do not let Jesus take the wheel. You know when you hear that saying, oh, my, Jesus, take the wheel. Nah, don't let Jesus take the wheel. We're not even sure if Jesus got a driver's license. Does Jesus, does Jesus got a driver's license? <laughs> you know, you have to take the wheel. You are the one in control. That's why they say the warrior's path is the quickest way to enlightenment. Because once you start seeing the, the fruits you get from all of the working out, you start seeing, it was me, I did this, I did this. It didn't feel real good. Bobo, Bobo Lee Shoes is up in here. Then it feels real good because you did it. Stop allowing people to take your credit or give you credit that you don't need. Take the credit from yourself. Now, their credit is extra. See, when you give yourself credit and then someone else throws you some credit, oh, now you rocking. When's the franchise coming to Orlando? Very soon. Soon as COVID is gone. Like, COVID complications has took one of our best fighters, Marvin Marvelous Hagler. And as I said earlier, I'm going to say it now from the bottom of my heart. Fuck you, COVID. Now, COVID doesn't care that I say fuck you, COVID, because COVID knows that's just my perception. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? COVID doesn't care about my perception. It's going to keep killing people. COVID has it right. COVID doesn't have to care about my perception or how I feel about it. It's going to keep doing what it's doing. And that's the same thing with life. Life don't care if you fall on the floor kicking and screaming. I would say kicking and screaming like a girl, but I'm tired of dissing girls. Kicking and screaming like a weak beta male. <laughs> that's right. R.I.P. to Marvin Hagler. Rest in peace. One of the greatest to ever do it ever do it. The, he was the first smooth fight your southpaw orthodox fighter ever, way before Terrence Crawford. To me, Terrence Crawford is Hagler 2.0. I don't know if Hagler went to the hospital or got an injection, but I heard it was COVID-related complication. Excuse me, that took him out. You know, I, we lost a lot of good people because of COVID. Some of them we know because they did things and then some of them we'll never know because we just don't know their families and know what they went through. But there's a lot. So, like I said, from the bottom of my heart, fuck you, COVID. So, yes, when COVID is over, I'll be making my rounds to Orlando. I can't wait. I'm ready to just move around. Like, I, I think this is the perfect time for me, you know. Aww. Oh. He said, I don't watch TV. Damn, good good for you, man. Stay away from that TV, man. Got a lot of, you know, that's how they get you with the commercials. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the perception. They keep putting the subconscious perception in your head. You won the chicken sandwich. You won the chicken sandwich. You won the chicken sandwich. Next thing you know, you, you ride past Chick-fil-A. What do you do? You get a chicken sandwich. See, they're controlling you. <laughs> With subconsciousness, that's why you got to be on guard, man. There's so many things you need to defend against that a punch is like the last, last it's the bottom of the totem pole, punches and kicks. There's other things that you need to have your defense ready for. You got to have a spiritual defense, mental defense. Yeah, because that's what's going to beat the subliminals. Brainwashing is what they do, of course. Because they understand the brain is the biggest muscle of them all. It's the muscle that matters. They don't try to, no one tries to uh, 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 control your muscle, your bicep muscle. They want this brain. Because they know if they control this brain, they take everything. Take the head, the body follows. So they pump you full of that shit and then your body follows suit. Why you think diabetes is so big in America right now? We so overweight. Look at the commercial. We got Burger King, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks. All these people are vying for your attention, fighting for it, spending millions to get your attention so you can go buy you a Starbucks coffee. As a right-handed southpaw, would you say that I need to learn to fight orthodox? Also, do you feel Kung Fu could be effective fighting or again has its golden age passed? Mmm. 
Well, yeah, as a right-handed southpaw, you definitely need to learn to fight off the docks. You know, I, I understand with fighting with your best lead in, in, in front. I get that. But it causes your left hand to die. Like, we are two-handed creatures. So maybe you may not be able to get one arm as educated as the other, but you should always bring both arms into the game. And if you're a, um, a, a right-handed fighting as a southpaw, this hand is back here dying while this hand is doing all of the work. So what you want to do is bring this hand in, let it get into the game too, and then you, this hand is already smart, and before you know it, you're a two-fisted attacker. 42% obesity. Yes, if you're training and studying, you have no time for TV. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hypnotic Burley, gun hand Burley telling y'all the truth. You ain't got no time for no TV if you're putting in that real work. What? Yeah, they are revamping The Last Dragon, and they're not even going to call um, uh, T-Mac. They're not going to even use the original Bruce Leroy. Total disrespect. Michael Phoenix, salute. Total disrespect to not use the original Bruce Leroy. If you're going to do a revamp of Bruce Leroy, you must use the original Bruce Leroy. Uh, have him in there doing something. You know, I know he can't be the star. We all know he can't be the star. But damn it, bring him back into the movie. Come on, don't leave him out like that. Don't do him like that. Don't do him like that. We're going to have to boycott that movie. I got some people that follow me. We'll boycott that shit. Yeah, they remaking everything. They, there's no more original movies no more. There ain't nobody trying to do originals. Everything is remakes right now. This is a lazy time for Hollywood. They're like, shit, why should we think of something new or buy a new script? Get that old script. We'll redo it. They, they you know, they recycling the money. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely, yes. He was definitely a real martial artist. And yeah, I, I, I believe the heyday of Kung Fu is only behind us because of the fighters. Like the fighters are not what they used to be and that's what makes Kung Fu suck. Yeah, working out in America, in America is literally dying, yes. Yes, we 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 we're fat, we're fat marshmallows over here. Ah, he said Korean movies, awesome story, good fight scenes. What is a good Korean movie? Would that be like Raid? Because Raid was a dope movie. I wouldn't say it was a Korean movie, but I know those wasn't Chinese guys in Raid. You know, I don't know if that was Filipino or Korean. That, but they're mar But yo, insane. It was like. Muay Thai mixed with Tai Chi. I loved it. The fight scenes in that movie Raid, I haven't seen nothing like that. Not, nothing's topping Raid right now. The fight scenes was crazy. I'm talking about crazy. Crazy. Like the fight scenes, you can go back. Raid was Indonesian. Worry, Igor. See, you learn something every day. Raid was Indonesian people. Them Indonesian motherfuckers is some bad people. They some bad, bad men. Because that was one of the dopest fight scenes movies I've ever seen. Ever. Ever, ever. Yes. Ron Van Cleef. Salute to Ron Van Cleef. Aston Price Lockhart. Question. Why does no one... Want to talk about this food? Yeah, the audience has responded today. Salute. Um, that's a good question. Why does no one talk about the similarities between boxing is rational, kung fu is um, intuitive fighting? So, not, not saying that kung boxing is you punch me in the face, I punch you in the face. Kung fu can be I fight a man acting like a tiger Ray 2 was also good I didn't I didn't I, I gotta watch that one I gotta watch uh, Ray 2 that's a lot in Ray 2 in, in Ray 
They use a slide. I thought, but um, I think that's what it is. Why we don't talk about the similarities in kung fu and boxing because they're kind of like at different spectrums, but they do have. But what we need to talk about is how they need to be put together. Because as my teacher, you have two sides of intuitive. Two styles of fighting. You got rational, you got intuitive. What's rational? Boxing. What's intuitive? Kung Fu. So you bring them together like your brain, and now you kick him. You kick him buttocks first. Because I, I don't want them to hit up my, <laughs> hit up my channel. Choppy LB, salute. <laughs> you know, you bring them together. Together. And that's, I believe that's what we train. Like, I think Kung Fu needs boxing like boxing needs Kung Fu. JKD, the system of no system. You know, well, JKD, we all got to remember, was Bruce Lee's philosophy, not a style. He, he said he did not want it to be a style, and yet somehow they turned it into a style. So I guess we all just said, fuck what Bruce Lee was talking about. Like, we hear, we hear you, Bruce, but we're going to do what we want to do. Yeah, they all complement each other, of course, because it's all fighting. Stick fighting complements gun fighting, because I may need to hit you in the head with this stick to get to my gun. They all complement each other in the art of war, because it's all needed in the art of war. There's too many variables, so it's all, they all complement each other. Similarities, mm -hmm. it depends on what their theories and philosophies are. You know, because like Tai Chi works, works very good with the wrestling. Why? Because Tai Chi talks about sensitivity, feeling, uh, leverage, f does very good with uh, wrestling. Trying to apply that to striking very hard. It can be, but it takes a different thing. So, how would I apply striking? A Tai Chi concept in striking, which would be make a miss, make them pay. I make you kick, move out the way, you keep kicking, and I counter punch while you're kicking. Yes. Kung Fu plus boxing equals San Da. <laughs> there you go. Any teachers I know of in Orlando? No, but I do have a good friend out there in Tampa named uh, JR the G-Man. Who, who trains with me and he, he trains pretty well so if you can reach out to him but Orlando I think that is pretty far from Tampa my Florida knowledge is not too well I've only been in Tampa and I've been to the Keys but I'm coming to Orlando I had a guy just reach out to me I think he's in Orlando and he said guess who my trainer is like and then he showed me a picture of Yoel Romero he said if I come to Orlando he's going to introduce me to Yoel Romero so you know I got to come because I got to pick Yoel Romero's brain but that's only 45 minutes away yeah you can reach out to my uh my homie JR the G-man he's on my Facebook uh under JR the G-man he he probably working today because if he wasn't working he'd probably be on this live I'll be doing a live with him on Thursday but um, send me your information to lightburly52 at yahoo and I'll hook y'all up do I think a keto is effective yes keto is very effective by the right holder the man without the fantasy a keto a keto um, theories are, 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 are correct um, like when you think of Tai Chi, they say complete the circle. So if I had your arm and I was bringing you down, I would bring you all the way down. That's completing the circle. Where the keto does is they 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 uh, work. They use the dynamic forces against you. So I bring you down, then I switch you back the other way. That's what causes the break and causes you to flip flap all over the floor. Tom Brady's wife, Big Aitan Tai Chi. However, that's possible. He's Tampa Bay. Oh, that he uses Tai Chi. I can see that. Tom Brady, a bad motherfucker. Hey, sis. How you doing? Yeah. I'm live talking. Everything is effective. Depends on the practitioner. There we go. Michael Phoenix in the building talking right. Yeah, I, I would believe Akito. I believe when Japan 
ran up there and 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 and, and was beating on China. They they took some of their records, they had some of their um, information, and that's what they got out of it. I think Aikido is Japanese is the Japanese perception of Tai Chi. I believe that, and I believe it's effective, just not how we've seen it. I think that's I think that that's one of the biggest things is that, you know. The fantasy of we would love to believe that you can fight people, flip them, grab them, throw them. We believe we can do that, but it's not going. It, you can do it. It's just not going to look like that. It's just not going to look like that. And I think if we get out the way, if we get out out of our own ways and trying to create that fantasy, we can see these arts do work. You know, they do have a working part of them. Now, there could be some things to them that go more towards the culture than the actual fight, but that's okay. Yeah, see, the real deal, he, like he said, he's been doing a keto. It's effective. If you know how to fight everything, then he's correct. He is correct. See, there is one element in fighting that matters most, more than technique. More than technique. Can anybody tell me? The element that matters most in fighting, that's way more than technique. It's the reason why technique will make sense. Can anybody tell me what that is? What that would be? What you need? We got the individual will. Good ones, good ones. Not it though. Perception, reaction, that's good. No, you need heart. Can't go into the battle if you ain't got no heart. Like they'll tell you in the gym, I can teach you, I can teach you <coughs> how to throw a left hook, but I can't teach you the heart to execute it. Executing the left hook under pressure is not easy because um, you need heart. You need courage, what we talked about the other day. Grace under pressure, courage. Yes. Because <laughs> you on, you vibing, we vibing, we vibing, DXL. You already know, you already know, you already know. Salute to you, warrior. You already know from the heart. So you need heart, baby. That matters more. There's no te there's no technique you can have if you scared to death to execute the technique. It could be the best. I can give you the one technique. Like yo, every time you use this technique, you're gonna win the fight. But if you scared to use it you'll lose every fight. So there's, as we say in the gym, you got to come in with the one thing that can't be taught, and that's heart. That's right. What puts the ape in apricot courage? <laughs> you, want fights, you want fights with your heart, no muscle for the chin, true? Yes, you can win fights definitely on heart. Yeah, scared to go, scared to, go to church. As they used to say, you scared by a dog. That's right. That's right. Heart of a soldier. The heart. This is first. You got this. Oh, then every technique is available to you. If you got heart, we can teach you anything. I can teach you the Palme five-point heart exploding technique if you got the heart to pull it off on somebody. Teach you how to blow his heart up. Right there. So, that's what matters. The heart to execute. You know, think of Harriet Tubman. She had the heart to execute. Like, I was just reading up the other day. I didn't know Harriet Tubman, Harriet Tubman was in the Army. She was an Army lady. Oh, ish. Things you find out. But what would have been the Underground Railroad without her heart to execute? To pull that ish off. When she knew if she got caught, it was over. It would have been no underground railroad. So hard to execute matters in everything, not just fighting. How you live your life. If you got the heart to execute, you're going to get to the bag. I guarantee you. The bag is a byproduct of having the heart to execute. It's a byproduct of that. It's, it's, it's by, law, by laws of everything, you got to get it. The dancing beer checking in was the topic, perception. The topic is perception, how we perceive. 
you know. You got your, you got the heart, you get to the bag. Cause you got the heart to execute. And that's what happened with a lot of Kung Fu men. They got the technique, they just ain't got the heart to execute. Because they don't spar enough. Oh, well, the heart, well, you, you, you your balls come from your heart, baby. <laughs> that's the, that, that's where you get the, where you think you get rhinoceros balls from, from your heart. You don't, you can't get no rhinoceros balls and you ain't got no heart, you know. The heart and balls go together. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They go together. Your heart make your balls hang. Pause. And then for the women, it's the same thing for the women. <laughs> Accept and fear equal courage. That's what I learned. Yes. Real deal. It's called grace under pressure. Grace under pressure is um, pushing past your fear and going on anyway. That's courage. And as we said, we was talking about this other day that without fear, you can't reach courage. So courage is a main component. I mean, fear is a main component to courage. So you have to be scared. And when you feel it, but you still go and you do it in any way, oh, now you're courageous. See how that works? Steps to this. So don't get mad at fear anymore. Sometimes we get mad because we scared or we feel in some sort of way. Don't get mad at that. That lets you know you alive, baby. Feel them little butterflies in your stomach. I feel it. I feel it every time before I scar, spar. I feel butterflies. <laughs> what makes the muskrat guard his musk courage? That's right. I feel the butterflies every time. Because every time you spar, you could die. We fighting. Somebody can be seriously hurt. I can get knocked out on camera. So I feel the butterflies. But guess what? I perform anyway. That's the courage. Oh, that's a deep one. Is heart or something else? Um, I would have to do more research on that. Is um, I've never heard of that. Break that down for me. Is that a Chinese expression of heart? He said, experience is the best education. The coward and the courage are both full of fear. The coward... And the courageous are both full of fear. The difference is what the courageous one does with the fear. Yes. You turn the fear to fire. Fear is fire, baby. All, the t all day, every day, fear is fire. And that's how you got to use it. Like you lighting, like you setting wood on fire. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He's the MMA guy. All right, going around challenging challenge the martial arts. So, yeah, I love that guy. No, I love that guy. The, he is way full of heart because think about this. They have done everything they can to make his life a living hell in China. China is totally against that man, and he's still doing what he's doing. He is full of courageousness and heart. What he needs to do is pack his bags up and move to America because they, really, they don't like him over there, but I know his family is there. That's, that's where he's from. It wouldn't be you know, easier said than done, but they have lowered his status as a, as a human being over there like he can't get on the trains and the buses and they're trying to do that so he can't make it to the fights and he's still making it to the fights and you know he's one brave man he's going against the chinese government they could kill him like he could he could wake up with some cyanide and his rice like in his uh mugu ga pan they put some they put a little something special in his mugu ga pan put a little special something special in his egg foo young so he need to get up out of there. If I was him, I'd move to America. Because he'd be a star over here. We love him. Somebody been needed to put those masters in place. 60-year-old man still talking that smack like he about that life. Crazy as a mother. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, they tried to get at Bruce, too. They ain't like the fact that Bruce was over here teaching Americans, black people and white people. Yeah, Ego, it's time for them to wake up. They're, well, they're waking up now. We've, we're, we're seeing it. We're witnessing them wake up. You know, they had the one dude, he beat up the one Wing Chun guy, Wing Chun fighter with one hand behind his back. It's terrible. They have to be witnessing and waking up to uh, 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 the nonsense now. And if they not, that's, that's a, you know, that, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. That's, you know, that's sleeping at the wheel on the next level because we 
MMA has killed MMA should have killed all of the fantasy. I don't know about y'all, but MMA has killed all of the fantasies for me. Before MMA came in, I believed in a lot of stuff like Tiger style, snakes. I believed in all of that nonsense. <laughs> yeah, one hand behind his back. Check it out. Check that. It's crazy. I believed in all of that nonsense. Then the MMA came out, and I ain't believe in snake style no more. When they picking you up and put you down on your face. Like one guy, his whole style was, I pick you up, I put you down. I pick you up, I put you down. And he was killing everybody. No, no, the snake style guy was on the ground with his snakes. His snakes was, <laughs> his snakes was sleeping. <laughs> he put him to sleep and his snakes. They were sleeping on the ground. You know, so yeah, MMA proved it to me. Killed all my fantasies. Yep. <laughs> That's right, Dancing Bear. I had many challenges with all types of martial art fantasies, and they all took the Nest T plunge against me. And that's not bragging or boasting. It was just that they were wrapped in fantasy, and I was wrapped in the blanket of reality. Because I had good teachers. My teacher, Roberto, he kicked me in the ass. He choked me. He armbarred me. My teacher, Wilson Pitts, put the gloves backwards and beat me silly. Because they loved me. Because they loved me. And they didn't want me to be out there thinking I knew how to kick ass, and it was all a fantasy. So they wrapped me in the blanket of real good reality the people that came to challenge me was wrapped in the blanket of uh, 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 illusions and <laughs> insecurities and, and, and lies and that's why they took the nest tea plunge you know when someone can tell you it's the style not you they're lying to you it's always you see the people that came to challenge me they didn't come they came with their style and they lost Maybe if the man would have came, they would have had a better, a better chance. Because when you face me, you ain't facing no 52 blocks. You facing light burly. And that's a whole problem to figure out. <laughs> it's the real deal said. So the glow from the last dragon ain't real. I was mad too, man. I was mad too, son. I thought the glow was real. I thought there was a level you reached the martial art where you can... <laughs> you know, you can... But nah, son, you're nah, son. The only, the only glow, the only glow you gonna get is when you walk back in the dressing room and the lights is, the lights is on, <laughs> and everything is glowing, you know, and everybody's in your dressing room like, yo, you knocked him out, son. You, <laughs> he's still sleeping. <laughs> that's the only glow you get. But oh, that soundtrack is way still glowing. What? What? Fire! Fire! Fire, fire, fire. To me, it's one of the most underrated uh, uh, kung fu movies that ever made was uh, The Last Dragon. I I'm with the remake of The Last Dragon because it was one of those movies that it did good, but it wasn't like The Matrix, so you can do it over. Movies that didn't really like blow, blow, blow up, you can redo. But movies that have been done, like Coming to America, there was nothing left to do and they touched it. I ain't gonna say they messed it up because I don't know who's seen it and I don't want to mess up nobody's movie going experience. But some things you gotta leave alone. Stick Man's workout albums. Mm. What, from the Dead Press? He said, unless you dance like Terry Crews and white chicks with whistle and glow sticks. <laughs> he said, I also enjoyed, oh yes, very good music. I also enjoy Roberto Sharp's Soft Fish streaming program. Thank you. Uh, he will have um, a course on my course, advanced.lightburly.com, where we're going to do booth, we're going to do spliff talk with, with the roster, because we know he's roster. And um, hopefully he'll grace, he'll bless us with some capoeira or some Wing Chun Kung Fu. But I just think Roberto's mental food is deep enough. Like, he used to talk to us and I'd feel like we had a dope class. Like, we didn't do nothing. We walked up and he just started talking to us and then we would leave. Like, class is over. And I felt like I got some. Yeah, they made Blade. But you know, because of that... Wesley Snipes stole the show in Coming to America. I'm going to say that. 
And then because of that, they're talking about bringing back Blade, baby. Do you see how one good showing can open the doors for you? Because he killed, like he stole the show in Coming to America Part 2. I'm sorry, Wesley did it. And now we're talking about Blade 2 is on, it can happen. Thank you. Thank you, Wesley. Because Wesley took a hit. Took a hit. You know, they hit him up. He wasn't looking too good. But now, because of Coming to America, that performance he did, they talking about Blade again. That's right. Wesley Snipes is the real deal. I hope to meet him one day and do a 52 block movie with him. If anybody could pull off 52 blocks in the movie, it would be Wesley M.F. Snipes. And I would love to be a part of that. So, Wesley, if you're on this live, and I know you're not, <laughs> but if you somehow happen to stumble upon this live, get at your boy. Well, I, I've heard that he did practice 52 blocks. I've met Wesley Snun, son. I've trained Wesley Snipes' son. It was only one day, but it was one day I met him. You said they're killing him on YouTube, though. Why are they mad at Wesley? Well, Wesley, they're killing him? Oh, they say he's only worth 10 million. Damn. See, but sometimes you got to take the short end to get the big end. I don't know what's up with these guys. I get it. You want the you want the big money. But sometimes when you on your comeback, you got to um take short money to get back up. The world of martial arts spe special Wesley did in the day was great. Yes, he needs to do another one of those. Perception, in, in, indeed. Ten million is still a lot of dollars. Ten million is still a lot of money. So you got to sometimes take the short end to get to the big end. Yeah, you can't be this talent. And you sometimes you got to leave it on talent. Oh, I love Dombey. I would love, you know, I love Dombey. I would like to learn more Dombey. You know, I would like to. Yeah, and Mr. Snipes has a lot of money. He could take some short paper. See, when you're hungry, you'll take short paper. See, you'll do a lot of different things on your come up. But once you get to the top, you suddenly, you don't want to negotiate anymore. I'm not going to be like that, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all. If I ever get to those millions and they say, yo, like, we'll pay you five million to do a, a live video like you used to do. Even, or a or hundred, I'm taking that money. Because when it's for the love, and you know you're going to double off off the back end, you do it. It's called investment. Sometimes you got to take the short end to get to the long end. We all know this. So if I was Wes, I'd take that $10 million just so I can be back at Marvel and kick the doors open. Because when, when we go to the box office, y'all going to have to respect me. Y'all going to have to put some respect on my name when I take y'all to the box office. Oh, man, Eric Fosner said, I'm going to get there. Blessing. See, you'll get there when you have people that put that energy in the air for you. So thank you. Black Cash, do I teach, train in person? Yes, if you're in Georgia, you can get it straight up personal. That's how I do it. Yeah, we're we getting a movie on 52. 52 is just that exciting. The story of 52 must be told. Just like the story of hip-hop. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there. You know, I've been I've been beating at this rock for like 15 years. So I got people that started watching me when they 10 years old. Now they 25. So I've been at this too long. I got to get there. That's right. That's all I need is two to five percent. That's all I need. <laughs> and I'm see. And let me tell you something. I'm a hustler. I know how to put my percentage points on there. <laughs> what I learned in them streets, people pay a lot of money in business schools for. How can we contact you? Okay. Um, contact me. It's the block line. I have the block line where anybody can call me. Anybody can text me. That's how I play. That number is 347-816-5357. I'm going to say it again. 347-816-5357. Five seven. Anybody contact me? You want to talk about fifty two? You want to kick this? You want to kick the shit? Chew the fat? I'm there for you. Oh, ego. You know fifty two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Spread the word.
Yeah, we do. You know, well, I, I don't think that's a myth. I think the search for the glow is real. I think the myth is how we perceive what the glow should be. We perceive that the glow should be this energy off your skin. Why can't the glow just be how you feel? You do get a glow. That is fact. I, I got the Bruce, Bruce Leroy glow. And not just because I'm black. Because there, there comes a point when you're doing this so much, you do get a glow. It's just the myth is we, we expect the glow to be the shining light off of our skin, but it's not. Salute, Black Cash. You're welcome. Thank you. Wow, Tyson Lewis, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm here to spread the word on 52, man. And like I said, we cannot. Fantasy and reality are two sides of the same coin. Because of the fantasy, you may engage in the reality. And sometimes the reality is so real, you live in the fantasy. So we cannot separate the two. Because there is a fantasy of reality, and there's a reality that runs through the fantasy. So we can't separate the two. We just have to know where we're at in our said place. Are we, oper are, we, are, are we operating from the fantasy level or the reality level? The fantasy level of martial arts is <clears throat> you read books, but you don't train hard or for real. You're in the fantasy part because the reality of it is you need to really condition your body to really pull this stuff off. Yes, true fantasy is like Thanos. Reality is like Shaq, exactly. And Shaq is Thanos <laughs> in a lot of different ways. So, indeed, perfect, perfect example. Uh, you said, uh, you mean, you have to touch hands, yes. Get back. Yes. Yes, for the future martial arts stories, yes. We need the fantasy. The fantasy is what brings people in. Like, uh, um, it's, it's what makes people dream and be creative is the fantasy. Like, there was a fantasy at one point that a black man could be the president of the United States of America. That was a fantasy. It's now a reality. So, um, yeah, we need fantasies in our stories. It makes the stories dope. It doesn't always have to be hardcore reality. Reality is good, but fantasies make the stories dope. Debunk Buster Rhymes and Pete Rock's outrageous comments is mandatory for every hip hop. Wow, I gotta check that out. For every hip hop head. It would be cool to start a short document. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm working on something, but mine's is going to be a, a YouTube, uh, a YouTube story where I, I'm going to I'm doing the story on 52. Um, I don't want to give away the plot, but stay tuned for it. But it's going to be a YouTube story, a YouTube series. The Chocolito Estrada fight. Didn't Chocolito win that? Didn't Chocolito win that? I didn't see that fight. I did watch. Did anybody watch David Benavitez? God damn. 11th round. He's just a monster. Fantasy also embeds the technique. Yes. Because fantasy is play of the mind. This is why you need fantasy. Because fantasy is play of the mind, not play of the body. It's play of the mind. So you need that fantasy. You need to play with your mind just like you play with your body. You play with your spirit. That's the fun side of the mind is the fantasy is that you can you, you you can fantasize about things that's how powerful your mind is yeah that's a badass story right there <laughs> truth sometimes the reality can be as good as the fantasy yes because that's definitely a good story and uh, something that we've done in a small way. We didn't get all 50 states, but we was out there kicking ass and taking names. My reality is shoulder duckouts, most advanced level found here. Wow, on YouTube, I tell people my kung fu is for my health. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. Your kung fu doesn't have to be for... 
for, you know, whooping ass. It could be straight for your health. Wow, he said fantasy, wow. Fantasy kung fu, hustle reality, like Burley in the hood. That's right. Look at them guns. Hold on. Move my shirt. I've been, look at them guns. Mmm, it's made for this. I was made. I'm, I'm straight from the dirt, man. I'm straight from the dirt. I don't get it twisted at no time. I'm straight from the dirt. And I, you know, I wouldn't have had it no other way. You know, I, I grew up hard. I came up hard. But it's all worth it because now I can give back the experience to the next generation. That's right. Fantasy started all this technology we, we have now. That's right. That's right. Without no fantasy, we wouldn't have these cars. We wouldn't be fantasizing on cars that can fly through the space. And, you know, hubba cars and hubba boards. We wouldn't have thought about that without fantasy. That's what I mean. Do, do not. I used to. I used to beat up on fantasy. I had these videos called Fantasy Killers. But I was young then. I've grown now, and I'm not trying to take nobody's fantasy from them. But what I do say is, don't turn away from the reality. You know, you can be in your fantasy, but just don't turn away from the reality. Our reality. Because reality is not reality. It's our reality. I think aliens wouldn't even give a rat's ass about what we would consider reality. But this is our reality. So you got you to gotta also have to factor that, in, factor that in. You can't leave that out of your... Your equation. So that's all. Don't throw away your fantasy, but don't live in the fantasy. Don't throw away your reality because you're mad at how real it is. It's the size. You gotta find the Tai Chi middle, y'all. You gotta hit it right in the middle. That's what Tai Chi is ta always talks about. Don't go to the extremes. It's not black or white, it's gray. Tai Chi middle. Exact real deal said we talking to each other now on our phones. We created exactly because back when I was coming up, this was not a reality. We had to literally get in the phone booth, get 25 cents, and call somebody, and you couldn't even see them. That's right, Alliance. That's right, fantasy can expire real work too, like how we watch the kung fu movies and then go copy what we saw. Yes. Fantasy, fantasy is, fantasy can inspire you to go towards the reality. That's right. Hey, 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 I'm a Star Trek fan, Star Trek fan from the old school days. I'm, I'm, I'm a Star Trek fan when, Cap, when Captain Kirk was doing that crazy drop kick. Remember that crazy drop kick? Captain Kirk was nice with it. He see you about to get into your nonsense. Come, hit you with that crazy drop. And he had the crazy chop. Remember Captain Kirk had the crazy... Because, mm, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Spock could hit you with the Vulcan joint. Just, you know, hit you and sleep you. <laughs> Mr. Spock was nice with it. I want to know the Vulcan nerve pinch. I want to learn that. Where Mr. Spock at, man? Tell Mr. Spock to teach us how to do that. Oh, man. He says, speaking of fantasy, I thought I could fight until I started training with you. Well, now you the dancing bear. And I double dare anybody to mess with the dancing bear. You know what it looks like to see a bear dancing? Neither do I. I don't want to see it because it's probably dangerous. So don't mess with my dudes. Don't mess with the dancing bear, Burley. Yeah, Star Wars. I never was a Star Wars fan. I liked it the first one. Way more Star Trek than Star Wars. I like Star Wars, though, but I'm way more Star Trek. I'm waiting for the aliens too. You know, I'm definitely waiting for the aliens. When the aliens come down, I want to pass them a blunt or some of that real sticky icky and see what happens. I wonder, you know, be messed up, we kill the aliens. <laughs> they ain't ready for that sticky icky that we got down here. <laughs> oh, Buck, Ro stop playing Sinclair. Buck Rogers. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Who we got? Captain Kirk versus Buck Rogers. I want to see the responses right now. Who y'all got? I'm calling it out. Captain, yeah, R.I.P. Marvelous Marvin Gibson Ballard. Yes. Captain Kirk versus Buck Rogers. Who y'all got? Michael Phoenix say Kirk. Come on now. Who, who with me? 
Okay. Kirk with the stomach though after he after his shirt gets ripped. <laughs> Tyson said, I'm taking cap. Oh, ego going with Buck with disintegrate. <laughs> Real deal said Buck Buck. Depends on who Captain Kirk is with. <laughs> what if he's with Scotty? If Captain Kirk is with Scotty, who you got? I ain't gonna lie. Uh, that that's a tough one. He said if he's with a bunch of women, it's Kirk. Oh, you know Kirk while out for the women. Nobody got more women than Kirk. Kirk was Kirk was bagging alien women. We didn't you didn't even peep, peep that. That Kirk everywhere every every planet Kirk went, he bagged some. He bagged some. Like if I was G Man TV, if I was Spock, I would have been mad. Because it's like how every planet we go, you you getting the yay yay. And I, we getting nothing over here. Like Spock and them was never smashing. <laughs> Kirk was smashing every show, every planet he went. I think he went to one planet. I think she had like four titties and eight arms. Kirk smashed that. He smashed that four titty and eight arms. He don't care. He don't care. More titties, more arms. Kirk smashed. He said if he was Scott, he going to beat him up. <laughs> Facts. You know what I'm saying? Kirk was smashing every show, man. You don't even know how cool Kirk was. He was getting that. He was getting that alien for JJ. He was getting alien vagina. Yeah, he'll show out for the ladies because he was getting that alien vagina. The whole, the whole ship. The only person smashing was Kirk. I'd have been mad if I was Scotty. I'd have beamed Kirk ass out of there. <laughs> man, it's more hardcore Star Wars. Than this. Okay, I'll check that out. Cause yeah, I'll check that out. Yeah, Kirk was always smashing. Buck Rogers was the man, though. We can't even, we can't even front. Buck Rogers was mad cool. Yeah, real deal, facts, facts. What if he got some alien shit? And, and when they say it feels like fire really shoots out your penis, but what if fire really shot out of his penis? Cause he got that alien, that the alien claps. The alien class penicillin can't help you with. <laughs> yeah, Kurt knew how to, what Kurt knew how to be the quick retreat now. Kurt knew how to pull out. He was out of there. Yeah, if you get alien claps, we don't know. Because I don't know if Kirk was using condoms. I ain't, I, I ain't never seen Kirk, let me, hold on, let me go get the condoms. I ain't never seen Kirk say that. So I think he was running up in them alien girls raw. Shame on you, Kurt. Shame on you, Kurt. Kirk probably has some alien VD, you know what I'm saying, that he ain't tell us about. <laughs> that was that one episode they ain't never show when Kirk had to fight the alien VD, almost took his life. They had to go find penicillin on Mars to, to fix it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because Kirk stayed smashing. Kirk smashed every chance he got. Well, we've reached that hour mark. <laughs> he said, how many hybrids he semenized? <laughs> yeah, Kirk probably got babies all around the country, all around the universe. You know, Kirk is the, the real baby daddy from hell. <laughs> you can't get child support if you live on Mars. Oh, when he brought the furry crabs, I remember that. <laughs> it's the future. They had birth control, Ray B. <laughs> uh, uh, you just step in the machine, take the baby out of you. Damn it. What if he hit up an alien chick who had teeth? In oh, man. That child support going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, alien coochie with teeth in it? Mm -mm. You're going to have to be like a Klingon. I think when the Klingons, do you remember the Klingons? I think that was Captain Picard with them. When the Klingons had sex, it was supposed to be mad rough that they tried to kill each other. You may need a Klingon <laughs> to handle some of that alien coochie. <laughs> Salute. Like, as I said, thank you all for participating in this live. Y'all make these lives so dope that I just got to keep doing them, man. I'm, I'm, yo, I'm addicted to live, man. I'm addicted to the live, so y'all can expect tomorrow we're going to talk about what drug selling has done in impoverished communities not just the black community all communities what has drug selling done 
and can it be repaired? That is our next live. Has trapping helped? Because I'm one person that I've hustled and I think I became a good person. Eric Fosner, hell yeah, this has been extra fun. I love this. I'm telling y'all, I'm addicted to live and, and I'm addicted to live and connecting with my peoples, man. I'm addicted to this. So, you know, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, what's tomorrow? Monday, maybe Tuesday. Tomorrow I gotta I gotta drop a I got I'm dropping a lot of good technical videos tomorrow. So I may take a break tomorrow. But that live is coming back on Tuesday. Thank you. Salute, thank you. To all my people, to all my peoples that make this live extra, extra dope. Salute. I give you the triangle trade salute. As always, hands up, chin down. Rumble, young man, rumble.